Hi there, and welcome to another Scriptcase tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at using Google Maps inside of Scriptcase, specifically building a heat map. And we're going to be looking at what a heat map exactly is in a little bit. But for now, my name is Nate Carpenter, and I'm the Scriptcase instructor leading this tutorial. So what is a heat map? Here's kind of what a heat map looks like in Google Maps. We're going to be building one that looks pretty close to this, actually. So as you can see, there's some spots highlighted with different colors, and those colors represent different densities in the data. So a heat map is a way of representing data density. So as you can see, in certain parts, it's more red, and in other parts, it's more yellow, and then more green as you move further out to the edges of those areas that are highlighted. So the red is where it's most dense, and then the green is where it's least dense. We're going to be looking at how to do this with some different types of data. And it's really just based on uh, GPS data, so longitudes and latitudes. Um, but it's very easy to set up. So let's look at some of the components that are needed to set this up inside of Scriptcase. So first, we're going to need to use the Google Maps API, which is a very, very nice API. If you've ever worked with APIs, this one is very convenient to work with. We're also going to need some location data. So we're going to start out with just some uh, kind of demo data that we're going to hard code in. And then we're going to move to using some data actually from a database table that's a little more realistic, which will be a little more useful to us. And then we're going to actually put this heat map inside of a script case blank application using some HTML and some JavaScript. And if you're not a programmer per se, this is still very easy to do. So I want to encourage you to stick with this because a lot of this code can just be copied and put in with just a few modifications. And I'm going to show you how you can do that. So let's get started with this, starting with the Google Maps API and see how this is done. All right, so we are here on the documentation for the Google Maps API, and you can get this by going to developers.google.com slash maps. And then if you click on documentation here, it'll take you to this documentation landing page. And before we can look at the documentation for this and get this set up, we first need to choose which Maps API we want to use. So if I scroll down here, you see many of them here. You see some for Android, iOS, various different use cases. But what we're concerned about is the JavaScript API right here. This is what we're going to use to implement heat maps inside of Scriptcase. This is the easiest for us. So I'm going to click on that. OK. And I should say, before we get too far into this, that you will need a Google account for this to get set up. Um, so make sure you have one of those if you don't have one already. Otherwise, you can use the one you already have. So here we have just an overview of this documentation with some basic uh, setup information and so forth. But before we can really do anything, we need to get an API key. So that's what's used right here. And we're actually going to use our own API key for this. So if we go over here to the left, it has get an API key as an option here. So let's go through that process. So first, we need to go to the Cloud Platform Console. So this is where you will need a Google account. And if you're already set up with the Cloud Platform, you're good to go. You might need to set up your account with the Cloud Platform. Um, but then we go over here. And if we follow the steps here, we need to select a project, which we already have right here. So you might need to create one if you haven't already created a project. And then we just need to choose the menu icon here. So that's right over here. And we need to choose APIs and services and then credentials. So once we choose credentials, as you see, I have a couple of credentials here and I'm going to create a new one just so I can show you guys how it's done. So I'm going to go to create credentials here, API key. That's the type of credential we need. And boom, we have an API key right there. And so all we need to do is copy that. So we'll come back to that in a sec. But now that we have that API key, uh, we can use that to set this up. So let's go back to the documentation. And there's one more thing I want to show you here. So if we go over here to this left menu again, let's look at the actual documentation for a heat map. So if we scroll down just a little bit, we have heat map as an option. So let's click that. And here is some information about heat maps. And so this would be good for you if you wanted to customize this a little bit more, or dig a little bit deeper in to see how this is done. 
Um, but basically, what we need to do is we need to load our library like this. And when we load that, we need to pass in our API key, which I'll show you how to do that in just a second. But that's that API key that we just got. And then after we set up the map and everything, which I'll show you how to do, we just need to create a array of different longitudes and latitudes. So that's this right here. And then we just need to tell it to create a heat map like this. I've already got some code set up like this to work inside of script case along with some other functionality. And so let's look at how to do that inside of script case and how to set this up using kind of this basic information here. All right, so I'm in my script case development environment here, and I have an application set up here that we're going to use in a second. Uh, but that's not our actual heat map application. We're going to set that up now from scratch. So we need a blank application, as I said in the intro. So we're going to go to new application. And we're going to choose blank application. And we're going to name it like so and click create. Okay, and here we have our blank application. And if you are unfamiliar with a blank application, it's really just a place to put some code uh, without having to worry too much about the script case UI, since we're not going to be using a lot of those components in this particular application. So we can just worry about putting some code and letting it run. So let's go ahead and get started with some of this code. Okay, so I just pasted some code in here, and it might look like a lot, but it's actually pretty simple. And a lot of this you really wouldn't need to edit to make it useful for your use cases. So let's just walk through this, and I'll show you exactly how everything works. So first of all, we need to close the PHP tags. So this is a uh, PHP block of code, so we need to close it up so that we can put in HTML, because we're mostly gonna be using HTML and JavaScript for this. So now we're just opening up an HTML document. So setting the doc type, the tags, the head, all this, you don't need to worry too much about. We're setting the title for the page and that's heat maps. And then we're setting some CSS. So you need to set the height for that. And then we're going to set a body for this height and then margins as well. And then we also have a floating panel here and we'll see that in a sec, but basically that floating panel is a little panel of three buttons that's gonna float over top of our map to allow us to perform some different functions on that map. And so we just need to tell that panel to float over top and how big it is. So we can tell it 10 pixels from the top, 25% over, and then the Z index, that's how far on top. So it's sitting five layers on top of everything else. And a background color, some padding, border, the alignment of the text, the font of the text, the line height, and the padding of the left. So that's basically our panel and how that's gonna be set up. And we'll look at the buttons that go on there in just a second. We're gonna close that style, close the head up. So now we're going into the actual body of the HTML document. So we go in there and there's not a whole lot here actually. A lot of this will be handled by Google Maps when we put the request in. So we've got the body and we've got an opening div and that is that floating panel that we saw right here in the style. And in there, like I said, there are four buttons. Each of those buttons performs a different function. It toggles the heat map, so that's gonna turn the heat map on and off. Change the gradient, so that's gonna change the colors from a more green color to a more bluish color. Change the radius, so that's gonna make those highlighted areas a little bit bigger, more obvious, or a little bit smaller and less obvious. And then change the opacity, so that's gonna make the transparency a little bit more or a little bit less on those highlighted areas. And each of those has a function, a JavaScript function, that is called on the onClick. And we're going to look at in a second um, how each of these functions is set up. That's in the next bit of code that I'm going to copy in here. Uh, but just toggle heat map, change gradient, change radius, and change opacity. So that's pretty easy. And those functionalities will be included in those functions. So let's go down. We close that floating panel div with all the stylings that we have already set up for it. And then we have one more div, and this is the last element in our body. And this div is called the map. We put it on there and it's just an empty div, but we're going to assign our Google map to this div. So when we set up the map using the JavaScript with the Google Maps API, we're going to tell it to attach itself to this div. And we'll see how that works in just a second. 
So that's basically the UI for this. So let's look at the nuts and bolts of the code of how this works with the JavaScript for setting up the Google Map. So I'm going to copy just a little bit more code here. And that's going to go in the same area here, right below it here. Okay, so there's a lot of code here, but a lot of it's repeated as you might be noticing. So I'm going to scroll back up to the top here. Okay, so we've got a script area here. So this is opening up an area in the HTML document for a script, namely JavaScript. So let's walk through this. This is actually pretty simple and it might seem intimidating, but I would encourage you just to take a breath and walk through this with me. It's actually pretty simple and pretty easy to set up and a lot of this you won't even need to modify. So we start here setting up two variables, the map and the heat map, which we will use later. And then we have our first function. So this is the init map function. So this is going to be called when the page loads. And what we do is we set up a map. So that's using that map variable. We're creating a new Google map here and we're attaching it to that map div right here that we saw before. We're telling it that's where we want the map to be put. And then we're passing some settings to that. First, it's a zoom setting. So that's how much we want it to zoom in, how close to the object, to the center of the map we want it to zoom in. So you can tweak that a little bit if you want it to start further out or start closer in. And then we're telling it where the center of the map is. So when the map loads, it's going to put this specific coordinate here, the longitude and the latitude, in the center. So that's going to kind of tell you where it is. So maybe you want the center to be New York City, or you want to be Chicago or any specific area on the map. And then we're telling it the map type. So it can be either a satellite or a regular map looking thing. And we actually have the option to toggle those on and off. But we're telling it to start with a satellite like this. Okay. So we've got that set up. Now we need to set up the heat map. So a heat map is a layer that goes on top of the Google Maps. So we're telling it we're using this visualization library and we're telling it to put a heat map layer in. And for that, we're passing it some data. So first we need to pass it the points. We're going to look at those in just a second, but that's all the data itself. To set up a heat map in Google Maps, we need to pass it a bunch of different coordinates or points on the map, which I mentioned earlier when I showed you the heat map. So those are going to, this function here is going to return all those points and pass it through to Google Maps. And we'll look at how that function works in a second. And then secondly, we need to pass it the map itself. So this is the map object created using the API. So we just need to pass that through. So it knows, so Google Maps knows what map to attach this layer to. Okay, so now we've got a couple more functions. And these functions are the functions that we saw with our buttons right here. So these get called when we click those buttons. So first we have the toggle heat map. And all we need to do is we need to check if the heat map is on. And if it is not on, then we'll set it on. If it is, then we'll turn it off. So this is just going to turn it on or off. And this is all in the Google Maps API if you want to look at how to do this. And then we also have the gradient, the change gradient. So that I mentioned is going to change it from a greenish, reddish color to more of a bluish color. So we just need to pass through all these different color values for all the different variations in the gradient. So our gradient is a, is a color that varies as it moves throughout the, throughout the area that it takes up. So we'll look at how this actually works. So you actually will be able to see how these buttons work and it'll make a little bit more sense then. But we're just going to set up that gradient and then set it to that if it isn't already. And then we have the radius. So that's just the area that that highlighted area is going to take up. And we'll just set it to something a little bit, little bit larger there to make it bigger if you want to make it more obvious. And then the opacity, we're just going to turn that down a little bit so it's a little bit more transparent. So that's how those buttons work. And we'll look at those in a second, see exactly how they work so it'll like make a little bit more sense to you. And then our last function here is this get points function. So this is the one we saw earlier that we use when we create the heat map here. And all we need to do in this get points function is return a big array of longitudes and latitudes. And we need to create those longitude and latitude objects using the Google Maps API. And we just pass through those coordinates here. So this is a whole bunch of kind of demo data that we have set up. We're going to look at how to get this from a database in a second. 
But this, these are just a whole bunch of different values set up right here. So I'll scroll through all these. It's just setting all these up and then it will just return it when the function is called and that will get passed through to the Google Maps API, which will give it the data it needs to set up the heat map. So that's all the functions. And then all we need to do is set up the Google Maps API. He's called that actually using JavaScript. So all this won't work unless we actually include the Google Maps JavaScript library. So let's go here, and that's what it does here. So we're setting up a script. We're closing this script and setting up a new one. And we're calling a source here. So this is a link, just like what we saw over here, is essentially what we're doing here is this link to this library here. But we need to set it up with our API key. So here we have a test API key here. And we just need to set that up with our key. So let's go back over here. This is the key we set up. Let me copy that. And I'm just going to paste it in right here. So that'll use our new API key like that. And it should be all set up and ready to run. So let's go ahead and run this code and see how it works. So go ahead and click run up here and wait for it to generate. Okay, and here we have our heat map that looks kind of like the one I showed you in the image before. And we have different bits of data here with different densities highlighted throughout it. So that's really nice and convenient. And it's really pretty easy to set up. And I want to show you these buttons up here. So we have our toggle heat map, so that's gonna turn the heat map on and off like that. So it just turns it on and off. We also have the gradient that's going to change the colors shown. So there we have a little bit more bluish colors there. And then we have the radius. This is going to make the areas just a little bit bigger and more obvious like that. And then we can lower them back down and then the opacity. So this is going to make them a little bit more transparent. So if you can barely see them there, and then I click it again and then you can see them more readily. So that's the basics of how to set up a heat map layer in the script case development environment. Now let's look at how to do this with some real data instead of some demo data. All right, so we're back in our script case development environment here. And the first thing I want to do is copy all of this code here that we created because we're going to use it all again and we're just going to modify it a little bit to use the data from our database. So let's go ahead and set up a new application for this. This is going to be another blank application just like before. And let's create this. And we're going to name it like so and click create on this. And then let's copy this code in here. And we're just going to save it there for now. But right now we need to look at our data that's set up in our database. So we're going to go back to our home tab here. And you might have noticed this form incidents I had set up already. Let's click on that. This is a form, just a very basic form. And I'm just using this to show you the type, type of data that we have set up. So this is connected to a table which has all the database of different um, incidences within a city in Brazil, actually. If we look at our fields here, we have the address of where it is, the type of the incident, the details of it, and then we also have the longitude and latitude values, and those are saved in the database itself. So let's go ahead and look at some of the data. So let's go to database here and database builder here. We need to choose our connection here. And I'm just showing you how to do this in script case. So here is our table, the occurrences table. Let's click on the rows here so we can view the data for that. Okay, so here's some of the data here. So we've got that ID, type, zip code, address, neighborhood, city, state, the details here, which is actually an HTML field. And then the longitude and latitude values here, as well as a date and hour and some other data here. So we're mainly concerned about this longitude and latitude data. So that's going to be already set up inside of our database and we can use that to create the heat map. So that's what this form incidents is for. And let's go ahead and run this and see what it looks like. So we've got our incidents here. 
We've got ID, all those fields here, so we can edit those. And then some details here, that's an HTML editor here. And we've got all these different fields here. So quite a few different rows in this database. So that's just kind of an overview of the data that we're going to be using. I just wanted to familiarize you with that so you can get a taste for how this would be used in a realistic scenario. So let's go back here. We can close this form up for now. And we're going to go back to that blank application we created here. So this is copied from the other blank application, the demo heat map. And we're going to keep most of this the same. Most of the UI and everything is going to stay the same. We just need to change where it gets the data from and how it uses that data. We need to pass that data through to the Google Maps API as the points that it needs to use for the heat map. So first, let's focus on getting the data from that database. So we have that occurrences table in the database, and we're going to query that and get our data out of that. So let me copy a little bit more code in here. And this code is going to be PHP code, so it's going to be before we close the PHP block here. Okay, so here it is. We're running a query on that occurrences table, and we're just selecting the latitude and the longitude fields like that. And we're storing that in this variable here, the DS. And we're going to loop through that. So we're just looping through all those values in DS. And we're storing all those values in a big array here. And it's just going to be a text string like this. So this is just like we saw down here with all this. We're just storing a whole bunch of these lines as text strings with our longitude and latitude values that we got from the table. Then once we get all of those values out, we can then store them in this result. But we first need to encode it as JSON because that's what Google Maps is expecting, their API is expecting with JSON. And then we just need to do a little bit of cleaning up of that data. We need to get rid of these extra brackets. So just replace the two opening brackets with a closing bracket and the two closing brackets with a single closing bracket, and then remove any quotations that might be in that string as well. So once that's all set up, this result string will be formatted correctly, the pass through directly to Google Maps API instead of all this demo data here. So let's go down here. All this will, re will remain the same. All we need to do is worry about this get points. So this is where it gets the data to pass through to Google Maps. So we're going to get rid of all of this here. So everything inside of this function we can just remove. So let me just highlight it all here. It just takes a couple seconds because there's a lot of data. And I'm just going to delete that. So now we just have a shell of a function. And I'm going to copy one more bit of code here. Just one line. Paste it in here. And all we're doing is we're returning those results. So we're opening a PHP tag because this is a PHP variable here, and we're echoing that directly into the JavaScript code right there. And that's already formatted as, as JSON JavaScript right there. So we're just going to echo it and then close up the PHP tag, and then we'll be good. So everything else is going to function exactly the same as before. It's just using that data from our database table. So this should pretty much function as it is set up now However, this data that we're using is actually from a different area in the world. This is from Brazil this time, a city in Brazil. So we need to tell the map to start in a different place than before. So to do that, we're going to go to the init map function again. And remember, this is where we tell the map how to set up initially. So we're going to tell it the zoom, the type of the map, and also where the center of the map is going to be on screen. So we're going to give it specific coordinates here that are different. So I'm going to copy some code here. Okay, so here is our new code, um, and these are just some different settings to initialize the map width. So the zoom is going to be a little bit less than before, and this is where the new center of the map is. So that way, when we load this, it'll actually show the area for which the data is relevant to. And then we're changing the map type to a hybrid map, like so. So let's go ahead and run this. This should be all set up and ready to run. So let me just click Run on this. So wait for it to generate here. Okay, so here we have a city in Brazil, on the coast of Brazil here. And here we have more realistic data. So this is where different crimes occurred within this city. If we zoom in a little bit, we can see it a little bit better. 
So here the data is not quite as dense. So we don't see quite as much red. We see a little bit more green, as you can see here. And that's just because the data is not as dense. So we just have green and yellow, but not really any red that you can see. So we zoom out, we can just see a little bit more as we zoom out. And so maybe we're zoomed out now and we want to make this a little bit more obvious. So let's change the radius. And so that makes those areas a little bit bigger as you zoom out. So you can see areas in the city where crime is maybe a little bit higher. And of course, all these buttons still work like before. And then we can also, I didn't show you before, but here we can switch it to a map view like this. And we have those different settings that you might be familiar with if you've used Google Maps before. So that's basically how you set up uh, Google Maps inside of Scriptcase with a heat maps layer. We're going to go one step further and set this up as a whole system, a standalone system that might be useful uh, to your use cases. So we're going to have a menu and we're going to have these different items attached to it. So let's go back here. Let's create a menu application. So new application here. And we're going to choose a menu right here. Name it and click create. And this menu is going to have attached to it the form to edit the data itself, and then also the two different heat maps that we've created. So we've created this menu here, and let's add our items to it. So we're going to click the insert item button here, call this add data, and we're going to link that to our form. Uh, let me go ahead and click the link here and choose our form incidents here and click import. So that will attach it to our form incidents. And let's add another item. So this is just to demo the heat map if we want. So let's name that. Let's choose our heat map demo here. And then one more item here. This is our actual heat map. Like so. And let's attach that to our heat map data here. Okay, so now we've got our items added to our menu. Let's select a default menu. So if I go ahead and run this here, we don't have anything loaded here. So we're going to go ahead and select something to load here initially. So let's go to settings. And here in settings, we need to choose the initial application. So let's scroll down here. And that is this default application field right here. So right now it's set to blank. Let's choose that as one application. And then let's choose the application we want it to be attached to. We want it to show the data heat map initially. So let's choose that. Okay, so now we run this and it should load this application as the default application. So let's run. It opens it up here, and there is our default application loaded automatically. And if users say, hey, I don't think all the data is here, so they can go back and they can click add data, add some more data, and then that will be reflected on the heat map like so. So that's how you set up Google Maps using the heat maps layer inside of Scriptcase using some demo data, and then also using some actual data from your database. So I hope this was helpful for you and I'll see you in the next tutorial.